Welcome to another edition of Get On Extra. It is the eve of the Caulfield Cup. We had a bumper edition last week with the Everest and the Caulfield Guineas, but it is really all about Caulfield this weekend with the Caulfield Cup and a massive support card as I bring in our team, BZ, Matt Hill and SD. Last week was great, but this week looks to be exciting. It just continues to get better <laughs> and better and better. Just like the show. Who, who, <laughs> just like to get on extra. Now strap yourself in, folks, because pure serenity of a 2,400 metre handicap around Caulfield at this time of the year with its sun shining during the week. And what an eclectic bunch of horses mm. we have, gentlemen. <laughs> Yes, it looks a great race. Uh, typical mile and a half handicap worth $5 million. You get some international flavour here and some horses that have been well back from the Joseph O'Brien yard in the past 24 hours um, in Valiant King and Akita Sushi. I'm sort of leaning with Gold Trip, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Ooh. I can't wait to get out to Caulfield on yeah. Saturday, Matty. I think it's a terrific race. It's one of the most iconic races. You, you think back of the days of Mannerism and Viander Cross and Northerly and Mummify leading all of the way and go back to Hay Eye in the early 80s on that wet track. It's a, an iconic race. And I reckon the Caulfield Cup's back. There's been a few doubters over the last two or three years and it's not as strong as it used to be, but this is a cracking race. Yeah, very open race. And as Busy and you mentioned, it's got a lot of different form references and they're all meeting in this mm. one race which always makes it such an exciting contest. And uh, one of your mob was able to claim it one year in <laughs> Torfoon's Melody. Do you remember that? <laughs> Lady Harry's. Harry's down the straight. <laughs> Lady Harry's and Best Ray Cochran. Years ago. Yeah, all the good in yes. 2008 for Karen. Yes. So uh, yes, the, the English have had a... a and the Japanese are back as well this That's year right. with Breakup, which is a little bit of an unknown horse. So I think it's what, about five fifty, six dollars $6 a field, Simon? Yeah, it is. What was Fantastic. your record like in a Caulfield Cup? Ah, being a handicap didn't get too many opportunities uh, due to the weight rate related infringements that one <laughs> opposed upon himself, but uh, no good. Slaughtered Chivers Revenge got caught up in traffic one year. I think I ran fourth in it one year in about four year. goes at it. Mm. Yeah. But it's a great race to ride in because when you scream out of that straight the first time, there's always carnage going to that first bend because all these little gladiators from the turf <laughs> like to posse up and get the elbows <laughs> out. <laughs> just try and get their positions to settle in from the 1800 metre mark. Uh, well, you may not have ridden <laughs> the winner of a Caulfield Cup, but we'll see if you can find the winner of the Caulfield Cup by tipping it. Let's kick off with early cash there and try and find some winners to kick us off on the program. We're going to go to yourself and uh, Matt because you're you're kicking it off in race number one. This horse, surely he's knocking at the door. Brave Mead, he looks ready to win. I'm very confident. I thought he's the best of the day. I've made him my Saturday best. Um, he has had two runs back this preparation. He bumped into the party first up. He just didn't get the race to suit at the Valley last time out. He was caught deep from a wide draw. Mark Zara tried to take off and then the speed kicked up underneath him. It was just very ugly. And he was beaten by a horse in Mahaba who might be pretty handy from the Grand Beg yard as well. So I think he's dropping back in grade to face this. Drawn barrier one, stalks of speed, and hopefully Matty's too good. Absolutely. Well, what I really liked about that run to BZ behind Mahaba was I reckon he was still getting through the line. And I can see a horse like Brave Mead getting into a race like the Coolmore with 20 runners and being a 33 to 1 chance yep. and running a really good run. I think he's a really nice horse, Brave Mead. So, yeah, he's my Saturday best as well. well. He's not my Saturday best, but I think that he will be very hard to beat. And I do like the fact that he gets to a big track. I think that it's really important to see him wind up and find the line strongly. So, he's a get on for me. SD, who are you with? Jeez, poor Brave Mead's carrying a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. No, he'd be right. Way <laughs> Positivity. One. Mark Zara. Positivity. Yeah. <laughs> looking at me now, now, wondering why I didn't tip him. <laughs> uh, might struggle to run the seven furlongs. No, he won't. Ooh. He'll run the strong seven furlongs. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Autumn Angel's going to take on. Is he out of a Galileo mare? Oh. He is. Yeah. This is done yeah. homework. Yeah. Okay. So that means he'll, he'll run once. the trip, no problem. <laughs> yes. Okay, Kingston Town's full brother couldn't trot, does he? But anyway, um, Dawn, Dawn Fraser's sister sunk in the bathtub. There you go, Matthew. So who are you with? I don't know, I've confused myself. Autumn Angel. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Autumn Angel, of course. I'm Taking on the favourite. Yeah, well, the favourite's too short, for my opinion. She comes off a group one win, obviously, the favourite would be hard to beat. But I think Autumn Angel, when you look at her run at Mooney Valley, where she got back three pairs on the fence, and she's a big girl, big action and she needed room to wind up. She didn't have it, she was crowded, but she was strong late. Guess who won the race? Griff. What did Griff do? He won the Caulfield Guineas and he's untapped Griff and I like that form line. So <laughs> from that barrier, the favourite's got to work a little bit to get across. Mm. Or First time at Caulfield as well. She's a pretty handy filly though, isn't yeah, she, Elizia? Like I haven't seen her in the flesh, but she went very quick time mm. winning the flight stakes and took the stuffing out of some of those horses in behind. A different 
pain barrier, so to speak, going to 2,000 metres. But yes. she's by prized icon. She looks as though she should handle the trip. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, and that stable could yeah. put a saddle on anything and it wins at the moment. Yeah. Gay Wardhouse and Adrian Bott, so. The Quilly, it'll be just, it will swing around the bend and he'll be going a little bit of Annie Lennox. Just talking to an angel. <laughs> Who's that, Hippo on the leader? Or no, no. Oh, Autumn Angel, Angel just runs straight past <laughs> the it. song. Okay. okay. Must be talking to an angel. You're on the right wavelength. Moving on. Apparently. Oh, sometimes I don't know where we go, but we're going back to Caulfield and <laughs> we're going to confusing. look at our best races, best bets from races four and beyond. Uh, kicking off is BZ win the sprint. We're all actually playing in the sprint, but we're going with different horses. Yeah, it's a tricky race, this, because it's only a small field and there looks to be good speed with Indian mm. Pacific in this event. We have had one scratching, which is Midwest, an important scratching, yeah. Midwest coming out. But yeah. I still think there's good speed, but I like General Bo. It's been a while since he's won, but I think there's a few things here that really suit him. He finally gets down in the weights as a result of Lofty Strike being in the race. 1,000 metres is a real strong point for him. He likes dry ground, and he gets the best in the business at the moment in Damien Lane in the saddle. So I think if he's ever going to get a chance to win, this is a great opportunity. Doesn't win a lot. No, this is, this is the time he's he does. He's a track and trip specialist, though. When Ooh. you look at his form, he does love it. Maddie, I'm with Spacewalk and so are you. Yeah. Yes, we're agreeing. I look, I just think it's a perfect race here. He went like a bomb first up, drawn the inside gate. He's low down in the weights. He loves uh, just rolling along in front and I just think that he's going to be really hard to beat. You've got to love racing, Pale and Sanjay. A mate of mine came up to me one day and said, you know, what's this? Went like a bomb last time. What does that mean? <laughs> it just went bloody good, didn't it? Yeah, like, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And I'm with Spacewalk. I think it's up and about, low in the weights with Jamie Carr. There's, I, I like the fact that there's pace, obviously with, with mid West in the race, I thought they were going to go absolutely ballistic, but no, I'm with Spacewalk. Too good for those, I think. And Lofty Strikes, great to have him back. Yeah. Uh, probably a little bit of a question mark. Springs a Group 1 form, Lofty Strike. I think a, a lot, I know they get six kilos off him, but a lot of them have to come up to his level. Mm. And he's a big, strong horse and will carry the 59 kilos. And a wise man once told me, Good horses will carry weight over a sprinting trip. Absolutely, a sprint, yeah, especially a sprinting trip. Mm. It's not so mm. detrimental to their performance. BZ, you're also playing in the Moonga State. Yeah, I think there's an opportunity here to bet against the favourite in Nunthorpe. I thought she's a little short, especially with a race where Buffalo River's in the event. I think Buffalo River might be hard to catch. He's on the back up again. He was terrific at Caulfield last week, and he did go a little bit quick when run down by Ayrton. So he'll be in front, but Shawnee Mathrick, um, oh, he's got cause sure for concern, just bubbling all the way nicely. He ran really well behind Star Patrol in a good race at Flemington over 1,200 metres, and I think he's better suited now getting to 14. So at what price is he? 950, oh. close to double figures? I can have something nice. on cause for concern. And you can you sort of use process of elimination in that race too. There's a couple with some question marks. I don't know if Climbing Star wants a firm deck, does it? Yeah. Uh, she's um, going all right. She's showing okay. She's a Goldilocks in between runs. Mm. I mean, she was very good behind Vavia, and then she was, then she, by sitting back, then she led out of uh, character and she mm. popped, uh, pricked like a balloon. And then last start, she, though, she was ridden quiet and she was held up badly. Here she draws a perfect gate to sit 1-1. I think she'll look the winner. Now, the feature on the day is the Caulfield Cup, and we've got an excellent field, as we mentioned at the start of the show. It's stacked with plenty of talent, but there's different form references coming into the race, which makes it such a fascinating contest. Obviously, Gold Trip is the horse that they've all got to beat. What's your sort of your your assessment of him and how he's going this preparation in comparison to last prep? I think there's a fair argument to say he's never been going any better because you look at his Turnbull Stakes run last year and it was okay. It was on a really firm track at Flemington, but he was only fair behind Smoke and Romans, and then he roared to life in a Caulfield Cup and he was narrowly beaten behind Durst. And when he looked the winner. He ran terrifically two starts back at Mooney Valley, and then his win in the Turnbull was outstanding. And okay, it was a fast run race. He sat back and he roared down the middle, but there weren't too many horses that made ground from back in the field that day. Um, I think he's, like we've seen Melbourne Cup winners come back the following year and win the Corfu Cup quite regularly. View did it, uh, Dunedin uh, did it as well. I think he's another one of those that can sort of come out of a Melbourne Cup He's the best stayer, and I think he can carry the weight. Devil's Advocate. Yep. You're the man to throw one at uh, for Devil's no. Advocate. The way Gold Trip won the Turnbull, does that make the form questionable? In terms of... Quality of the race. I, I think the time was very fast to say that there's some seriously good horses in this race, and West Wind Blows, um, Sulcombe was terrific there. 
Romantic Warrior wasn't that bad considering how hard they went. He absorbed the pressure and then hit the line. So I think it's going to be a high pressure 2400 and I think that'll suit him. And I also want to add something from the yard. I know that uh, Jane had him on top uh, last start in the Turnbull, but I remember him resuming first up and he I've never seen him look any better. I remember yeah. seeing him all the way through the autumn and I thought, geez, you're not looking as good as you have done in the spring. And spring comes around this time yep. and we were wondering whether he was going to be back. And he absolutely backed up an amazing run, looking good. Mm -hmm. And then he's gone and won. I think he's in, in rare, rare at the moment, but there are some horses that could beat him and you think Sulcum could do the same? Well, he's got to carry 58 and a half the toppy. I don't know that uh, last year's Caulfield Cup was um, a better race than this year. I think there's better depth this year, mm -hmm. to be honest. He goes up in weight and Sulcum meets him much better at the weights. Um, he just sprinted so well, well fresh. He's got to have come back a peg, I think, over the 2400 to step up to that. I know he ran in the Caulfield Cup, Cox Plate, and won a Melbourne Cup last year. I thought he could win a Cox Plate second up on the way he sprinted first up. So I'm thinking there's that uh, there's a lot of discrepancy between him and uh, Sulcum in the respect that Sulcum's had the two runs at Caulfield. Chris Waller, timing, get him around Caulfield twice. You've had the beautiful blowout in the Turnbull. He meets Gold Trip so much better for a horse that's set to win a Caulfield Cup, I think, Sulcum. And he's the horse for mine. I think he just draws the right barrier. I think Craig Williams, you know, he'll get it right from there. And he'll look the winner at some stage. And I just want to ask you one question. Yes. If this track dries out for Gold Trip, yes. With the 58 and a half kilos, he's not as good as when he can get his toe in it a little bit, when he steps up to a distance that is. Yeah, potentially. Um, yeah. They have put 10 millimetres of irrigation on the track and it walked quite firm on Wednesday, but actually raced with a fair bit of give in it. And it's it prepared the in the same way. The grass cover, do you think? Yeah, it's grass. And I think they've aerated the track sort of a week and a half ago, or two weeks ago. And I just think the base is really comfortable for horses. And I think if they've put that irrigation on, yes, we're gonna have a warm day on Friday leading into Saturday, but Tim Bailey's got a great handle on this surface at Caulfield. And I'm not thinking it's gonna be an absolute road by the time they run the Caulfield Cup. Um, that may sort of change, but I, I'm hoping they're still in that sort of good four. And that's for the reason time. why uh, Karen Ma decided to accept with yes. Gold Trip after watching Wednesday's race yes. meeting because there was enough juice and it yep. didn't dry out to a good three. It held yep. it a good four. That's why he's running. Matt, you can have the last word. Mm. I'm interested in Sulcum because I, I think he's a really, really good horse. I love him for the Melbourne Cup. Mm. Um, so I'm just wondering, was he set for the Caulfield Cup or the Melbourne Cup? I reckon without a fight's the horse that's been set for the Caulfield Cup. The run in the Turnbull was terrific. Zara's on, doesn't make a mistake in a big race. I'm sticking with out of fight. The lame issues are a question mark. Um, but I'm just trying Can't to help. pinpoint the 2400 metre horse that's set for the day and I think it's without a fight. But I love Sulcum. Yeah, very, very interesting race and fascinating to get the thoughts of these guys who will be the winner. Now it's time for Jelfs on the Shelf. We've got oh. some great uh, oh. pieces that we've seen <laughs> through the week. Now, last week we saw Sam Clipperton take out the Everest <laughs> on Think About It and well, it was a, a fantastic for Sam because he hasn't had the best year so far, but he decided I'm going to go out and I'm going to Indeed. Hate the town red, <laughs> but he had commitments the next morning. Take a look at this. 9.02 on a Sunday morning <laughs> after the <laughs> biggest win of your career and you fronted up. Good on you, son. I fronted up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm doing all right at the moment. So what happened last night? Um, <clears throat> gave it a good nudge. <laughs> <laughs> no tattoos or anything. No, no, no. <laughs> I've got a bit of makeup on. So yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah um, you can over that. <clears throat> Nah, just... Oh, <laughs> no. how good. Now, Simon, you've worked on um, the Sky Channel Sunday morning shows in years gone by. I have as well. Lizzie's done mm. a fair few of them. <laughs> Maddie oh. Hill. Um, it's we've fair to say there. we've all been in a situation where you thought, maybe I've just pushed the barrow a little bit too far. You've got to celebrate the wins. <laughs> yeah, you do. You've got to celebrate the wins. And uh, to say that bravery comes in many forms. <laughs> <laughs> and you were pushing through the pain barrier there, as most of us do, especially when you have a big night and you don't eat. 
<laughs> the following morning and then you go on and you had like two Panadols and then the Panadols kick in and then you burp sort of a, oh, about an hour and 20 into a one and a half hour show and it's just before we're thrown to the break, you uh, accidentally spew on your uh, <laughs> colleague's right shoulder. Because no, I heard just that a was a bit, a bit of a weather. wives tale but it's actually, actually true. It's true. No, it's absolutely true. Yeah. Who, was, who <laughs> was sitting next the, to you? The Joe spew, McKinnon? Joe McKinnon? The, no, the spew didn't go to air, <laughs> thank God, because Graham McNeese was wrapping the show up but anyway, it couldn't have been. It looked much better on Brian York than it would have on anybody. I must confess, though, to, to bring it back to Caulfield Cup theme, we had Pat Cosgrave on Racing.com the morning after winning with Best Solution, and he was in a world of pain, and I was... Just look up, son. Just keep looking up. Once you look down, you're in awful trouble. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of the Everest, um, what about the competition in New Zealand? They ran with uh, Entei and the New Zealand Tab, where a punter won $10 million by successfully picking the entire race order from 1 to 12. So, like, no. not just picking the winner. First, second, third, fourth, all the way through to 12. So that, exact punter, order. that punter, a trifecta, is going to be a doddle from now on. And right? the chance of it happening was 479 million. I, I, I suppose it was the year to sort of do it. Well, maybe. the three so favourites. He's taking well, under. Sort of. The three <laughs> favourites and a lot of the sort of poorly performed horses, so yeah. to speak, or bigger horses in the market did finish out the back. But You've still to get that yeah. sequence You're still going to have an element was, of luck. What was his theory behind it? I don't well, did, know. Do we know that? Know. Did he just have a um, crack or did he actually But on the same day, on the opposite end of the spectrum. New Zealand can't afford that. Alive, <laughs> <laughs> alive punting. Take a look at this. So someone's taken a dollar oh two in the run, Antino, oh. at the 100 oh, metre no. mark and has been defeated. So oh. like, you, can be the, you can be the luckiest punter in who knows what by yeah. picking up 10 million at that the opposite is a end of the beat. spectrum. Oh, look at that. God bless attrition sticking his nose out. Is is that really? yes. what, yes. Do we know what New Zealand's gross domestic product is, by the way? You reckon it's taken a hit? Yeah. A million. Yeah. It was insured, mm, so they had to insure well, the, uh, the jackpot. Right. But I'm um, oh. sure the premiums will be looking good next year. Ooh. Not sure what the gross domestic product of Malaysia is, but they've got a lovely race course in Selangor. And if you were betting in the run here, BZ, uh, what odds would you be giving me with 200 metres to oh, go? This seems like third I'm last. It seems like you're putting me into a, um, a track here. <laughs> <laughs> he obviously jumps out of the ground, I'm going Yes, to um, wow. all over the place like a shopping trolley in the last 200, but you'd still think the uh, horse in green is going to hold on. It gets up on the outside. Oh, Look yeah. at that right on the line. If you were playing in the yeah. run, you would have struggled. There. It's a beautiful place, the lingo. Mm. It's 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 a big straight, isn't it? It's a long watch <laughs> when you're that far back. A furlong to go. What was it? Ten lengths off them. Yeah. Sick beat. Absolutely. Sick win, sorry. Sick win. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of sickness happening on that. <laughs> shells on the shelf. Let's move on to Randwick. We're trying to find our best bets from races for and beyond. And a little bit light on for Randwick this week. Um, I'm going to kick things off. There's a really nice filly from the Golfin Stable. Race 5, number 12, commemorative. Uh, she did an amazing job last preparation, uh, winning at Canterbury. She's a huge, she's the, probably one of the biggest fillies that I've seen recently in training. And she resumes on Saturday. She's in a race, she's drawn a touch awkwardly, but she's in a race where I think she can be very, very dominant. And I think she's going to be a filly that we're talking about in the future. So she's a get on for me. Who's next? I tend to agree with you there, Lizzie. Commemorative does look very hard to beat. I think Unspoken's going to be hard to beat again. Uh, it was a terrific win last time out, hitting the line strongly. And Simo, I understand you like it as well. Peter and Paul Snowden got this horse absolutely flying, shooting for three in a row. And what we love about it, even though he goes up in grade, he draws the inside barrier of six, gets a lovely run. And the drop to 52 kilos has a savage turn of foot, this horse, and can win again. Yeah. Unspoken. Tough card at Randwick on Saturday. Time for Hillbillies. Matt, what have you got for us this week? Well, Lizzie, it's the best time of year, isn't it? I think there's 50 <laughs> country cups in Victoria. I think there yeah, is, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. There's some astronomical amount. <laughs> and we've got three of them this weekend, Horsham, Seymour and Avoca. I'm wondering, before you go, has BZ done the form? I'm waiting well, for I haven't. It. I haven't. <laughs> for oh. Oh. I've done, I've looked at... Wangaratta and Bendigo, but I haven't well, used it I want to set for Tokyo City Kiba <laughs> by the end of the day, too. What a magnificent venue. Um, so, Avoca, uh, Cracker Jack Prince in the Avoca Cup should get the right run. Archie Alexander, Will Gordon, and has got the right form lines. Uh, chased uh, Gregor Limo and co. last time. And, of course, that's all Coonji handicap form. We were a massa as well. So, Cracker Jack Prince, race seven, number Have two you been at to Avoca? Avoca. I haven't. Smallish track. You need oh. to be up on the speed. But I think a horse like Cracker Jack Prince, if it just gets the right run and can sprint over them late. Beautiful. Very yeah. good. Time for a break on Get On Extra. We've got plenty more to come on the other side.
He's best ridden with a sit. That's the best, the best races that he's run, the military mission in the last couple of runs is when he's been ridden with a sit. And that's how I suggest that we'll probably ride him. Military mission goes to the lead for the Magic Man. And military mission has won the Herbert Power by three quarters of a length United. I'm with the favourite, think about it. Been with him all the way along. I think the reason I've settled with him is just the draw. He looks to get a perfect run in any type of scenario that plays out. Think about it in front from I wish I win. Think about it! Think about it, won the Everest. Yeah, I'm quite keen on Fangirl here. I think dry track 1,600 metres with James McDonald from a good draw. I've had something on my Oberon at $41. I think that he's a terrific each way charge. Look at it go, Fangirl. A big win in the King Charles III. Beat Mr Brightside in my Oberon. I'm with another big girl, Morge. She won the 1,000 guineas at the end of, well, the start of her preparation. She's now off to Keeneland. She runs in a, a race over the 1,800 metres. Marge, Lindy running on. Marge, Lindy trying. Here the wire. Oh, too good, Lizzie. Well done, it's Lizzie. And Sim, Simo and I, I was really proud of our contribution last week. <laughs> Is that two weeks in a row now, Matty? We had a bar. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a bye last week, didn't we? Yeah, we, we, we were here. We oh, were we here, okay. and we just our nods were very good, and our, <laughs> and our funnies were quite funny. But apart from that, you uh, did a good job calling the cockroach race, Matty. Well, I don't know. It's a pinnacle of your career. <laughs> oh, yeah. You watched well, well the done, Get On you. show on the Thursday night. I actually tipped Fangirl and think oh, about why it. Why did you tip them on here? Well, I'm trying to share. <laughs> <laughs> Spread my wings. <laughs> We, Think of some we, other tips for get on extra. You don't have to. So you're trying to multiply on each yep. show. Did I get away with it? <laughs> no. no, I didn't. Okay. All right, let's try and find some winners. It's time for drum kit now. Uh, SD, you are kicking things off. Who are you with today? Am I? Okay. I think I've mentioned this, it's all just a little bit of history repeating with Climbing Star. I think uh, she's just going to get a beautiful run on the race. The thing that I'm excited about is her gate four. She can now sit comfortably in the first four, one, one, if she wants to. She'll run a strong 1,400 metres and this is a weak race. It's a weak race. So uh, the place at 240. I'm in the Caulfield Cup. I'm adding another one into the mix. <laughs> Look, I, I also agree with Beezy. I think that Gold Trip looks as though he's been set up perfectly for the race. I'm a fan of Solcom, and then I'm a fan of this guy, West Wind Blows. So we're looking to find a horse that is going to be able to run top three, and I think that West Wind Blows has got uh, plenty of ability, and he looks to me as though he's been primed for this appearance. Last race on the card for the Mayors, Vespertine for me. I think uh, Viviane is going to be very, very hard to beat. She's just about unstoppable at the moment. But the run will have to come to an end at some point. And one horse that has got class and, of course, won a race on Melbourne Cup Day last year, Vespertine, fresh for Graham Bear. Good place, Charles. Well, Viviane can still win. And mm -hmm. Viviane can still win Vespertine and Vespertine runs second. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. It's like we've got a little place quaddy here. We've gone the last four races at uh, Caulfield. I'm going race number seven with a horse called Waltz on By, who I think maps better from Barrier 4. Mm. She was terrific last time out. I actually think Skew If would be very hard mm. to beat, but in terms of running a place, I think Waltz on By can run really well. She's been a naughty girl, Skew If. Remember, she played yes. up in the barriers and she got scratched on her first attempt to yes. run here from New Zealand. Yes. They've got a barrier blanket on her yeah. this She's week. She's been back so to the jump out. She yeah. was good at the jump out. She was out. very good at Cranbourne. She brings that Group 1 New Zealand form. Yes, that's like right. on her. Uh, looking at the full frame graphic, this is what we're going to be doing on Saturday. Climbing star, West Wind Blows, Vespertine and Waltz on by for BZ. It's a place quaddy. Look at that. 7, 8, 9, 10. Mm. One selection each and around 50 to 1 if we can uh, like that win that. The English bit, the place pot. Yes. The place pot. Mm, that's good. Exactly. <laughs> Well, we're looking at our best bets elsewhere, and I'm going to Eagle Farm, my Queensland male, Sweet oh. Margo May. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> Race nine, number six. It's a get on for me. She looks as though she's uh, ready to win, and uh, this looks a perfect race for her. Uh, Simon, you're also at Eagle Farm. Yeah, and you're just rolling around on the couch, having a stretch, just checking the account. You might want to have a look at race 10. <laughs> Uh, number four, yeah, just thinking, right, sort of... let's have a look at the last at Eagle Farm, <laughs> shall we? Is that a euphemism? 10-4. Now, lost in transit, this horse was dropping back from six furlongs to 1,000 metres, charged late, just missed, steps back up to the 1,200, hello, and then Ryan Maloney will ride this horse an absolute treat, lost in transit, so the lucky last. I got uh, stopped in the street the other day and some bloke said, I love Simon Marshall's WA Mail, what have you got for us this week? Mm. Well, let's tune right into this. <laughs> <laughs> We love you too. What was his name? Come um, on, ben. Brent. Barry. Mate. Old mate. mate. <laughs> Old mate. <laughs> mate. Yes. Now, what's the uh, lucky number mostly in the world? Seven. Isn't Seven. It? 
Is it? Not seven. on a craps table. Seven, no. seven. That's okay. If you're the no, that's true. <laughs> Red Can Man is first up. He only got beat 1.6 lengths in the quokka. And he was placed twice at Group 3 level last preparation. He's trolled up nice and fresh. And he's 55 here at listed level. Red Can Man has been good money for him too, early doors. I like it. Very good. Well, I'm going all around the world wow. this time. Oh, <laughs> Turpentine. This Do we what? know where Turpentine oh, is? is South yeah. African racing. <laughs> yeah, South Have African racing. Have you just racing? been manning the phones all week? <laughs> yes. Just tips, tips, tips. I've, been, I've got a yeah. South African man. Oh, 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 this is magnificent. Well, oh, yeah. I wonder where that dive, dive, comes from. Can you just dive a little deeper into your South African mailman? <laughs> well, it's sort of a collective group of people. I've got a lot of people sort of working for me. So yeah. part of we've come up. Yeah, we've come up. Part of the mafia. And your husband, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He man's a male. <laughs> How's okay. it? How's so it? we called up mm. and we got to house it. Yep. So race two, number three, Wit Blitz at Turfontaine. Mm. Like it. I'm told it's, it is a get on. Okay. And after my international success last week with Morsh. I'm happy to follow. Mm. I want you all to follow it. Happy to follow, Lizzie. And also, <laughs> Champions Day in the oh, UK. Yes. It's the culmination forget? of the end of the British flat season on the turf. Now, BZ, I know that... We were working for yes. Royal Ascot together and there was a horse called Shaquille who was yes. racing mm. Um, mm. in the Commonwealth Cup. The you were Commonwealth also Cup. doing yeah. the coverage. He's out of the race. They've had loads of rain. It's yeah. an absolute quagmire. It's, they tend to always have rain before yeah, this, this meeting, don't this they? This time of year. And there's a horse from the Charlie Fellow stable called The Dream. Absolutely loves the wet. Shaquille's out of the race. There is a short price favourite, Kin Ross, in it, mm. but I'm banking on Vadrim being hard to beat on the wet track. And my other selection oh. is. But wait, there's more. But wait, yeah. there's more in the champion stakes. King of Steel is yes. racing against yes. Baybridge, but Baybridge. Loves it wet. Loves it wet. And we, we get the steak hey. knives as well. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. He's Ooh. a mudder. Oh, fantastic. So, wow. Anything to add there? I'm so extremely I've given you somewhere no, like to it. bet all the way through the weekend. And that's at late at night too, Maddie. I know you don't mind. I don't mind that. that. I like all... Champions Day in England, though, because once it's done, they start leaving the ground in England for six months. They start jumping, <laughs> which is it. very, very good. You'll be just getting home from the uh, harness race meeting there somewhere and tuning in. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah it'll be a big night at Melton yeah. Saturday night. Massive <laughs> night of <laughs> racing all across the world. Can't and wait. Looking forward to uh, seeing that. But anyway, there's a big moment about to happen. Ooh. We've got Maddie Hill. Well. well. From the Hilltops, Maddie. <laughs> Now, well, what are we calling this week? Oh, yes. Now, on the back of uh, the cockroaches um, <laughs> last week, which g gave us great feedback, <laughs> Lizzie never almost not came back. <laughs> you? you just thought, oh, I'm going to give up it, on this. It, it, <laughs> but we're sticky to Japan, you'll be able to eat yes. virtual racing from Japan. You can't beat entertainment like this, ladies and gentlemen. So they're off in the Japan <laughs> cup. Whatever that animal is towards the outside, I'm not 100% sure, but one's in front with 800 metres to go by a length and a quarter. Look at the grip he's What's got on number three. He's got on pulling the more than a Collins Street dentist running in second place. About three further back in the field. Not sure what that animal is. And then Racing Stripes is running in fifth. That the needs a good hit out the horse that's running second last. And, uh, well, well, elephant wow. horses running about third last <laughs> as they come towards the 600 metres. Who could possibly win this? It's number one in front. This number three goes oh, to... Oh, 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 my goodness gracious me. That horse has literally snapped in half. 100 metres to go. Look at last of the straight. Tommy Two Heads is coming. Tommy 100 metres to go. It's the grey in front. Tommy Two Heads. And look at the oh, Barcelona. Oh, right oh, right oh, the oh, outside. <laughs> dancing all over the place down the middle. He's get up and win. Done a mono. Oh, magnificent <laughs> stuff. You could watch that all day. That He's done a mono with 50 to go, a celebration mono. I reckon they would be How more do popular trackside if you had you calling the races in the pub. Oh, I think that's absolutely <laughs> terrific. <laughs> that is hey? some special stuff. <laughs> yeah. Outstanding. Some of the rides were questionable. What a bad beat when your horse snaps in half, though, oh. just halfway around. That's terrible. Imagine going to the owners. Oh, Imagine going to the owners. What, what happened? Um, a horse just snapped in half. Oh, oh dear. Jesus. <laughs> no, Moving on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... We're trying to find our best bet at the double figure odds. Mm. SD, you are kicking things off with... Yeah, Lazago here. I know she's carrying the top weight in the penalty. She shouldn't be $23 after running on beautifully. And Coed Volante, who beat her on that occasion, had a better run in transit and got out and galloped to the wide. But she's drawn 17, Coed Volante. And we've drawn four with Lazago. And Chris Waller, his, fine time, his timing is spot on for her to run seven furlongs. So I'm going to... She's a big, strong girl. 
I'm going with uh, Spirit Ridge in the Caulfield Cup. Of course, there is some um, horses who have got better credentials than him, but he comes off of a peak performance last time out in the Metrop, and I think he's a good one to pop into your first fours and multiples. I think this horse could just about win the oak swings of song. She was really good at Mooney Valley. She's $12 for Patrick Payne in the Ethereal. Not double figures anymore, but Arkansas Kid <laughs> was $14 into nine. But, uh, when was it $14? It was uh. Early on it was, very much so. Um, I can show you a couple of bet slips with it. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> on oh, on bet. <laughs> okay, yep, let's yep. try and uh, find a favourite to get beaten. Uh, BZ and I are with Nunthorpe. Esty? Yeah, look, she, she's a horse to beat, but at the price I'm going to take her on and uh, must be talking to an angel, autumn angel I'm going to take in that. Same magique, first crack at the distance, mm. not sure. And our best bet for the weekend uh, with it, There we go. <laughs> Esty, who are you with? Yeah, oh. I'm, oh, it's a feature race. It's the Caulfield Cup, but I think Solcom's just a beautiful horse that's timed beautifully by Chris Waller. I'm with the big filly, Commemorative, who is looks hard to beat and looks as though she is going to be a nice filly in the making. The good thing about us, Maddie, we can get the cash earlier, and if we get beat, yeah. we can go again. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh, oh, good way to be. <laughs> Time to head to a break on Get On Extra. We'll wrap things up afterwards. You've got to have a plan, don't you? Now, we found you plenty of winners over the weekend and we're kicking it off with Sunday session. Esty, you're going to be playing at Seymour. Seymour, three, two, Novak. Ooh. Novak Djokovic. I actually just had to look at that to see. Novak oh, Djokovic is running. <laughs> and he's third up and he's getting to the mall. He just got too far back at Sale and he ran on really well. And he's drawn better. Blake McDougall sits on speed. And I had a little chat to Simon Zara at a little function last night. And he's... Ooh. We're going Sunday. Right. So, Gosh, there's a bit of leg confidence. Up. Well, I'm going back to the EPL. Um, we've got this weekend Newcastle v Crystal Palace and Man United v Sheffield United. I'm uh, with Newcastle to win into Man United. Mm. Well, I'm just going to humble Horsham. <laughs> uh, don't worry about international stuff, you know. Humble Horsham, <laughs> had bowl, very speedy horse around the tight terrain of Horsham, has the claim. I'm going to Seymour and I'm betting in the same race as Simon. We're going oh. head to head. Oh. You're the favourite? Yeah. You, yeah. You'll be running right. second. What the heck? Oh, right. you'll be running oh second. is that right? Ooh, you'll be running yes. second. This Liam. is a nice horse, Steal the Sun. Should have absolute moral beat last time at Benalla on Benalla Cup Day. Stays out of trouble, it, it just it? wins. It's drawn a bit deep, hasn't Steal it? the sun. No, Barry Five, Jake oh, is in it. Oh, okay. William Howley. Sorry. No need wins. to yell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it when Daddy and Mum fight. <laughs> they always Take fight. the Quinella. <laughs> take the <laughs> Quinella. <laughs> not the exact. Good luck. Good luck. Made the best for yeah. you. Take her on. <laughs> I'm definitely I'll take watching. It's all right. It's time for extra, extra. We <laughs> all about it. SD, your headline is up first. What gold have you got for us this week? I'll take her on for a bottle of coconut oil. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Here's my uh, son's What are we going to do with that? <laughs> oh, mate, to fix the Jackie Chan. You oh, go. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, all aboard the soul. Welcome train to the Melbourne Cup. Welcome train. Thank you very much to the Melbourne Cup. He's going to run well. Uh, well, mine is um, oh. all about the oh, oh, I'm Jesus. predicting a long-range bet here, guys. I didn't realise we were picking oh. up yes. the Daily, oh. the daily Star. <laughs> Finished the, your the four after 2024 Triumph. And, of course, did you not see that qualifying game? Yes, it was good. We pulverised well, the we've reigning we've... European champions. After we've all felt like Sam Clippard and after that one, uh, <laughs> Zara Stop. gets golden trip on without Ooh. a fight. Ooh. That's a bit clever. I'm going one down, two to go for gold trip. I reckon he can do the treble. Wow. Rising fast, yeah. I think it was the last the, horse in 1954. Very gold good. trip might be able to do it, you mm. never know. Geez, you'd love to see him have a crack. Yeah. It's terrific. your time to shine. That's a really good segment, that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dad jokes. Here we go. So, hold on to your ribs, Rowdy. Here we go. <laughs> what did the bartender say to Eminem after he ordered a round of shots? What did he say? You only get one shot. Oh, God. <laughs> did, did it get that would have to be the worst. You only what? get one shot. Okay, did you hear about the joke about the paper? No. It's terrible. <laughs> All right, it's time to go now. Um, <laughs> do you want me to give you no, another no, no, one? On, I do like the consolation now. joke, though. <laughs> Just in case get the first on one was shows at 10.30 it tomorrow morning. You can see yours truly were terrible jokes. Oh, but for us, it's time to say goodbye. See you next week. <laughs> well, good. I was pretty happy with that. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.